As of now in our discussion on the relationship between magnetism and electricity, we discussed a very important law known as Ampere's Law. Now Ampere's Law essentially gives us a fundamental relationship between electric currents and magnetic fields. In other words, it tells us that electric currents create magnetic fields. However, Ampere's law is limited only to the special case when there is a great deal of symmetry that is displayed by our electric current. In other words, we can only use Ampere's law as long as we can calculate what the left side of our equation is. So according to Ampere's law, the closed integral around some closed pathway of the dot product of our magnetic field field B and our infinitely small segment DL is equal to the product of the permeability of free space given by mu naught multiplied by the electric current enclosed by this surface. Now we can only actually apply Ampere's law as long as our electric current displays a great deal of symmetry. In other words, we can calculate this with ease. Now, let's discuss the case when our electric current is not symmetrical. So let's examine asymmetrical wires that carry electric current. So let's suppose we have the following wire that is given by the following asymmetrical region. Now this wire carries an electric current as shown by the following orange arrow. Now, any asymmetrical wire that carries an electric current of I can be thought to consist of infinitely small segments of current known as current elements that flow through segments of infinitely small length DL. So, let's examine the following diagram once more. Let's suppose we take an infinitely small segment given by DL that is shown in the following region. Now, through this infinitely small segment, we have a very small current element that flows. Now, let's suppose we want to find the magnetic field at some point. Let's suppose this point as a result of this very small element of electric current that passes through a segment given by DL. Now, by it, Savar law essentially tells us that this infinitely small current element will create an infinitely small magnetic field given by DB in this particular region. That is a distance given by the vector R from this infinitely small segment given by DL. And the bias of our law is given by the following equation. So once again, the bias of our law gives us the magnitude of the magnetic field due to an infinitely small current element passing through a segment of conductor given by DL. Now the direction of our infinitely small magnitude of magnetic field is given by right hand rule number one. Now, let's examine this law in closer detail. Now notice this ratio is a constant. So usually we define our electric current I to be a constant. So we assume I is a constant. Mu naught is a constant. It's the permeability of free space. It has a value of 4 pi times 10 to negative 7 teslas multiplied by meters divided by amps. And 4 pi is also a constant. So this is a ratio that is usually a constant as long as I is assumed to be a constant. Now this is multiplied by the vector product of our infinitely small segment DL and our unit vector R. And this is divided by R squared. Now this DL is once again the infinitely small length of conducting wire that is carrying our electric current I that is displayed in the following diagram. Now R hat is simply the unit vector and it has a magnitude of 1. So this unit vector R 
simply tells us the direction in which this R points. So we can see R hat is given by the following green vector that points in the same direction as our vector R. So once again, R hat has a magnitude of 1 and R hat, which is our unit vector, tells us the direction of this vector R. So once again, this law is known as the Biot Savard law. It essentially tells us the magnetic field due to a very small current element passing through a very small segment of conducting wire given by DL. Now, the magnitude of our vector dB is given by the following equation. So recall, by definition of our vector product, so the vector product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of those two vectors multiplied by the sine of the angle between those vectors. So the magnitude of vector dB given simply by dB without the air symbol on top is equal to mu naught multiplied by I multiplied by DL multiplied by the sine of the angle theta divided by 4 pi r squared where the angle theta is the angle between the vector DL and R. So in this diagram our angle simply represents this angle theta between this vector R and this segment DL. Now this is a very important relationship. Why? Well, because it essentially allows us to calculate what the total magnetic field is at some point as a result of a current that is traveling through an asymmetrical wire as shown in the following region. So, we essentially divide this entire asymmetrical region into infinitely small segments given by DL. And each one of those infinitely small segments will carry its own current element. And that current element in each one of these regions will create its own infinitely small magnetic field at some point A as per this equation. And to find the total magnitude of our magnetic field field at that point, we simply sum up all those infinitely small vectors dB. So once again, the total magnetic field at some point, let's say point A, is the vector sum of all infinitely small magnetic fields dB due to all the current elements. So let's express that using an equation. So our total magnetic field at some point A away from an asymmetrical wire that carries an electric current I is equal to the vector sum and that simply means we're integrating dB. Now dB as per the bias of our law can be replaced with the following equation as we did in the following result. So once again mu naught I divided by 4 pi is a constant so we can bring that outside of our integral and we see that the total magnetic field at some point A as a result of an asymmetrical conducting wire that carries an electric current I is given by the following equation. So mu naught I divided by 4 pi and we integrate the vector product DLR divided by R squared, where once again R hat is simply our unit vector that has a magnitude of 1 and which points in the same exact direction as this vector R, which is our distance from our infinitely small segment DL to the point at which we're examining our magnetic field B.